Tonight, there is nothing in the pipeline from Russia. Today, Russia's state-owned gas producer, Gazprom, announced a complete halt to the flow of natural gas through that key Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany. The company saying that it has discovered leaks in a turbine. Now, the route was temporarily closed this week for what Russia called maintenance work. Now Russia says more work needs to be done. Germany is reliant, still reliant, on Russian natural gas and accuses Moscow of cutting deliveries to retaliate for Western economic sanctions. Earlier, I spoke to DW's Benjamin Alvarez Gruber here in Berlin, and I asked him what more we know about Gazprom's announcement, basically turning off the taps. That's right. After this maintenance, it was supposed to end today. But according uh, to Gazprom, state owns um, Russia's state-owned energy company, there was this oil leak at a compressor station, meaning that it will not be able to keep sending gas through this pipeline. And it can still not say how long this will take. The maintenance It's something that we've heard over the past weeks and months that it's pretty difficult uh, for them to say when this alleged oil leak um, will be solved and when Russia will again be able to send gas through this pipeline. So what kind of reaction, if any, are we hearing tonight from Germany or the European Union? There have been several reactions already. One of them is Germany's economy ministry. They said that this once again underlines and shows that Russia is not a reliable partner that is not abiding to the contract to send gas from Russia to Germany. We also had um, one of the chairs of the Bundestag of the German Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee saying that this is part of Russia's psychological war and the European Commission also condemning this measure. So it shows that there's a definite lack of trust between Russia and between Germany. Nord Stream flows halted for three days um, earlier this week. Are, are the effects, are they already being felt? This takes a time also when Russia says that there will be an amount of gas that it will send to Germany. Those are called denominations, a number that then is processed by authorities here. It's not possible to say how long this will last, but what German authorities have said, what the economy ministry has said, that Germany is now definitely better prepared than it was a few months ago in saying that the reserves of gas that Germany now has are at around 83, 84 percent, so definitely better prepared than it was a few months ago. Ago, but it shows that there's, a, there's no trust at all a few months when there was this annual maintenance by Russia and it says that it will send reduced flow to uh, Germany with this gas that is not only going to Germany but to other European countries as well. It was indeed a brief relief, but as there is no trust, there have been issues over, over turbines. There was a turbine that was in Canada under the sanctions, European sanctions, and that was sent to Germany. So there is definitely no uh, trust between them, with Economy Minister Robert Habeck also saying that Russia is using energy as a weapon and calling it a political maintenance. That's what he said previously mm -hmm. about Russia, saying that there are these problems with the turbine and therefore it cannot deliver gas to Germany. DW's Benjamin Alvarez Gruber with the latest tonight here in Berlin. Benjamin, thank you. Finance ministers from the G7 group of industrialized nations have pledged to impose a price cap on Russian oil. Now, they want to limit Russia's revenues and its ability to fund the war in Ukraine. Here's German finance minister Christian Lindner. This price cap on Russian oil exports is designed to reduce Putin's revenues, to close a major source of funding for this war of aggression. At the same time, we want to contain increases in global energy prices, which will minimize inflation globally. All right, we want to pull in now Anastasia Fedig. She is assistant professor of finance at the Haas School of Business in Berkeley. She is also a co-founder of the Pressure Group economist for Ukraine. Anastasia, it's good to have you back on the show with us this Friday. Energy sanctions on Russia have backfired because they've made energy more expensive and they've boosted Russia's income despite lower sales volume. Will this price cap, will it make a difference? So I think first we should be clear about what it is that backfired. And that's the fact that the sanctions to date have were implemented kind of slow with a lot of deliberation, right? I think you and I spoke about the price cap for the first time in May. Uh, yes. We're now in September. 
Um, and of course, um, what we uh, what we talked about back then is that discussing measures like embargoes, with but taking a while to implement them, can actually drive up the price even before the measures go into effect. That's exactly what we saw. The highest oil prices were actually in the beginning of June, right around the time of the six package. They've actually started to come down um, since then. So economically, these measures made sense back then. They make sense now. It makes sense to implement them quickly and without wording. That has the biggest effect. That. But of course, sanctions are not just about economics, they're also about politics. And the reason that these measures take some time to implement is that we need to achieve consensus. So for the six package, we need the consensus within the EU. And for the price cap, well, that's a much more global um, issue. And so we need some measure of consensus more globally. And, and let's stick with the economics for a moment. Uh, on a global level, is this really going to bring down inflation? I mean, it's not really clear what the price will be, and France has said that it can't be implemented until all of e the EU states have agreed. Yeah, exactly, and it goes beyond the EU as well. Um, so let, let's be clear. Uh, G7 um, agreeing to implement a price cap on oil is not so much about the purpose, the purchases by these G7 countries, right? It's not those countries saying, we're going to pay less for Russian oil. Those countries, some of them have already outright banned Russian oil. Some of them are phasing out Russian oil um, within a matter of months. So the price cap is really about um, kind of a global um, push to pay less for Russian oil. So we need consensus within the EU um, to use levers like shipping by countries like Greece, Cyprus, um, to use levers like insurance, to use all of our diplomatic um, means possible to coordinate this price cap with third party countries as well. And the level of the price cap will depend on that. It will depend on our bargaining power yeah. um, of the countries that are looking to impose the price cap um, with respect to the the rest of the world, the kind of more neutral third parties, and how that bargaining power compares to Russia's. You, I'm sure you're aware that the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, um, she has said that Russia um, is going to have to sell at the price capped by the West. I mean, is that really true? I'm, I'm thinking of these third party states that you mentioned. And can we quantify what effect this is going to have on Russia's ability to finance its war in Ukraine? Yeah. So I, I, I think that um, there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about our ability as the G7, as the EU, um, to have this price cap actually be taken up by third parties as well. And that's because we have leverage. We have leverage in terms of um, shipping companies, insurance companies, diplomatic means, including secondary sanctions. Um, so as an example, uh, last week, Russia was offering Indonesia a severely discounted long-term contract um, with a discount of about 30 percent. And Indonesia did not take um, that offer, citing uh, fears of um, being under U.S. kind of secondary sanctions as the reason. Um, so I think we definitely have the potential, and I view today's announcement as basically a signal um, that we are uh, reaching that consensus also with um, third-party um, partners. Um, and in that case, it can definitely have a large effect on Russia's finances. Anastasia Fedek with Economist for Ukraine. Anastasia, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.